Over the past couple of weeks, I have been researching and looking at the effects of air pollution, or more specifically, the effects of carbon in today's world. I have been looking at the statistics about carbon, how it has increased, how it has decreased, and how it has been affected by COVID-19. We need to change something. I never really realised the side effects it could give other people. The thoughts have already been there, but it's kind of brought them forward as to how scary it is. Okay, we're recording. Okay. What do you think about air pollution slash climate change? I think it's a big problem that's getting bigger and governments are ignoring it and it shouldn't be up to activists and mainly young people to try and stop it because it's not really in our control. Yeah, and I think it's mainly caused by cars and planes and that. Around 50 companies are creating around 70% of all of the emissions in the world so as much as it feels like everyone needs to chip in and do whatever they can it feels like whatever we do it's going to be combated by unless they do something i don't know how us using metal straws is really going to help i think it's definitely getting faster the more it continues so back when obviously air pollution started to happen because of us that was like a really slow progression but now as time gets on more it's kind of moving faster and developing faster and i'm not sure we can keep up i think it's a, a very double-edged topic in terms of how people perceive it because you've got a lot of people saying climate change doesn't exist you've got people saying it's real I mean, you've got people, you know, stating facts and proving that climate change exists, and there's also very arrogant individuals that do not wish to believe that, you know, a crisis like this is real. I think it's something that um, a lot of people are trying to fix in our society and generation. We're in quite a bad position at the moment with just how bad the world is changing. Did you know that your carbon footprint is around 12 tonnes per year? I did not know that. That's terrifying. 12 tons? Mm -hmm. Wow, I did not know that. I didn't know that, no. Is that 12 tons of carbon? Oh. Yes. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as two adult elephants. Really? It just makes me feel guilty. I don't know how to describe it. I, just, I know, I, I, obviously, when talking about it, you know you could do much better. And when it's actually put in perspective, you really don't think about that sort of stuff on how to improve it. That's really bad. Gonna have to start like looking to fix that now. It makes me feel like I should be turning off my uh, sockets and devices that uses electricity now. The CO2 particles enter your body. Your immune system then tries to fight against these particles, but doesn't succeed. The particles first make their way into your lungs and then into your heart. This will then lead to stroke and even heart failure. Due to the COVID-19 virus, a lot of people have suffered in many ways. As sad as the virus has made this world, the good thing about it is that the pollution levels have gone down again, allowing the earth to breathe more easily. And I think that's quite a good thing. Now, well, I didn't know this until I saw in the news recently about this little girl who died of air pollution. Like, she was like the first death to be listed as actually caused by air pollution. So it made me think a lot more about it. But yeah, no, I didn't know that until recently. If I lived in a big city where there was a lot of pollution, such as like London, where they're constantly breathing in and taking a lot of bad pollution, then yes, it would make me realise how bad it is. But right now in the village area, I think I'm fine. But if, if indeed in the future I tend to live in a location where there's a lot of pollution, then I would take more notice and caution with it. It's definitely shocking because when you think of air pollution, you think of it affecting the planet more. And yeah, okay, obviously, it, by it affecting the planet, you expect it to affect us, but almost as an after effect, not that soon, that much now. Have you heard of the Stop Idling campaign in Henley? I've seen a few things around, yes. I think I've seen a few posters. Yes, I've seen all the signs in the car parks. I think I've heard someone mention it, but I would be lying if I said I knew what it was all about. I have, yes because I think near the car park they had this huge banner for a while. Um, yeah. It's just, I think it said, you know, just like, stop hiding. I just saw the campaign, yeah. The Henley campaign. This is a campaign based in Henley, known as Turn Up Your Engine. I think that it's an example of an efficient and effective campaign based around preventing air pollution. I personally like it as it makes sense 
and I feel that people should do it more often. This campaign is about when you are stationary in a vehicle, you must turn your engine off to prevent wasting fuel, as well as preventing yourself from emitting carbon into the air. I've been around Henley exploring and finding the posters about stopping the idling. I think they stand out, they're quite informative, and they work. Do you think this is an effective method of preventing air pollution? Yeah, I think it could be effective, especially, I'm, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure like too much about it, so I don't know if it's like how it's going, but it sounds like a, a good idea. I think fines are a good way to make people stop doing things because it actually affects them then. Um, I guess so. I mean, I haven't really seen a lot of people idling their engines before, but they must do because why would those signs be there if it didn't happen? I guess the more people, yeah, if the more people stop leaving their engines on while they're in the car, the less their cars will emit carbon. So yeah, I, I'd agree. If, if, more people, if people are actually listening to it and following it, then yes, it's a, it's a good way of stopping air pollution. Do you think the rates of pollution will increase or decrease over the next couple of years? I think they'll still increase. I think even though there is so much that everyone's trying to do now and there are new ways of doing stuff to help reduce it, especially if we're starting to come out of lockdown as well at the moment and everyone's allowed to travel again and they're allowed to go around, I think everyone's going to jump on those opportunities and almost make up for lost time. So I think it might spike, if anything. I'm hoping that eventually it'll start to come back down, but at the moment I think it's going to continue going up. Depends on what factors are being looked at. If we continue to use a lot of gas guzzling cars, if we're using big factories producing a lot more stuff, also um, fly tipping, sewage management, and all that. If we can find a way to make you know all the waste management and you know production more greener, I guess it would go down. But if you know humanity and civilization lean to the more industrial side of maintaining production lines and stuff like that, then yes, it will go up. Well, as much as I hope that they would decrease, I think, to be honest, they'll increase because as much as the governments around the world are saying that they'll commit to being carbon neutral and things like that, I don't think they will because I think they care more about making money and to make money they basically emit carbon, I think, and like through production, farming, whatever it is, I think they'll increase, yeah definitely increase especially as maybe they did get a bit lower when everyone's been inside now everyone's coming back out and doing way more than they already were because they're making up for lost time it's going to go up and also um people may be traveling more even though it might not be the safest personally i feel that carbon is something people should be more aware of as well as consider doing small things to prevent emitting carbon as much as they can i watched a video where they discuss carbon and how to put pollution into perspective. For example, if we were to put the Earth's lifespan into 24 hours, we would have only been here for three seconds. And they talk about trying to get to that fourth second. To me, that's quite a good way of putting it. And it, it, it's in my brain now, and I always think we need to try and get to this fourth second. I've decided to create a brand called Swag Emission with the slogan, emit swag and not carbon. When you buy a t-shirt and then wear it, you are emitting swag and then a percentage of the money you spend on the t-shirt will go towards preventing air pollution, which means to emit swag instead of carbon. And a lot of the money will go towards the manufacturing process, making it more sustainable, as we need to get the product to the customer without emitting as much carbon as possible. I do think that's a good idea because, like with every problem, it's money is not always necessarily the main solution, but it does help a lot because even if it's not necessarily that it's being put towards making stuff with less pollution and less air emissions, it can be used for campaigning and advertising and the more that people hear and see stuff, the more it's going to stick in their brain. Yeah, I think it's a good idea because I think that, especially like for younger people, if they prefer to actually like get something with their money, even if you know that it's going to a good cause, I think it's good to have like a t-shirt or a, a product to get. And also people like brands and like representing things. So if it's for a good cause, then I think that's an effective way to get people to think about it. I think actually branding it with you know what you you paid for this it went to this charity and also you're still promoting it which means everyone else will be able to see it as well i mean yeah giving proceeds of your profits to a good cause is always a great idea i think that's a great idea it's a it's a great cause and people uh like to invest in emotion rather than just the product itself 
I definitely think that after this it seems more serious and I didn't realise how bad it was. Um, I knew it was bad but I didn't realise how much it was affecting us already and it's just kind of made me think about the thoughts have already been there but it's kind of brought them forward as to how scary it is. Yeah, well I didn't know that um, air pollution and carbon footprint could even be caused by leaving your fridge on and leaving your oven on and basically everything. I always thought it was just like big things like planes and cars and stuff like that, but you made me think how it actually is in everyday life. Definitely. I think about like the, um, the whole situation as one thing. I f seem to forget about others just because I don't hear about it as much. When I think about trying to reduce my footprint, I honestly I don't think about my car on and stuff like that. And like leaving the TV on overnight, I really just don't think about that and it really has definitely changed my mindset, yeah. Where you said how carbon emission increases the chance of you having a stroke and a heart attack. I, I mean, I, already, I, I was always a strong believer in you know climate change and air pollution and stuff like that, but I never really realised the side effects it can give other people. So yeah, you have enlightened me in a sense of what it can do.